love you. Thank you, Lord. I want to read um, a passage from First Peter. And I want to pray really quickly. Holy Spirit, would you just allow our hearts to be good soil? You said that the word has the power to save our souls. So prepare our hearts as I read, Lord. It says, all praise to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire is tested and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. And though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with a glorious and expressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We know that without you, we can't see him. So we ask you, Holy Spirit, to come. Come and open our eyes and open our ears. Come and breathe on our hearts in a fresh way tonight, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We ask you to come. Come and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen.
death, raise us alive up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt, raise us alive up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt, raise us alive up from the Praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Jesus paid. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Thank you.
sing that again. We sing hallelujah. Lord, we sing hallelujah. Christ be praised. We sing hallelujah. To the Lamb that was slain. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing that one more time. We sing hallelujah. If you're able and you're not on your knees, could, could we all just stand? And I want us, I felt as Aaron was leading us, that we need to sing in the spirit here for about the next two or three minutes. So remember, as we worship the Lord and pray in the spirit, mysteries, mysteries are being released. So can we do that? Can we all lift our voices and just sing? I want us to take the next two, three minutes and sing in the spirit. Just forget about yourself, forget about where you're at. Purpose in your heart with your eyes closed. You're just gonna minister to the Lord in the Spirit right now.
Keep blessing him. Come on. Keep blessing him. Keep blessing him. Oh, that's beautiful. Keep going. Keep going. Keep blessing the Lord. Blessing the Lord, blessing the Lord. Keep going, choir, keep going. Surrender, choir. your hands to heaven and let the Holy Spirit lead you let him use you tonight making melodies in your heart Holy Spirit helps us with our weakness. We know not what to pray, but the Spirit, yield your bodies now, yield your will, yield your will. Let your will go up, let your will go up. Don't 
fiel fendior Just another minute, come on, just just another minute. We love your presence, Lord Jesus, we love your presence. Fill us to overflowing tonight. from our hearts, the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, Lord. and full of glory can you just lift your hands to heaven and begin blessing him come on bless the one who bled and died just bless him just bless him like little children many of you have been in the kingdom for decades bless him like you did when you first got saved just begin to bless him and thank him look upon him and thank him to sing one more song to Jesus now. Don't you love him? Do you love him tonight? Would you just close your eyes and tell him, I love you, Jesus. Nothing says love like the cross. Let's look to him tonight. I want us all to sing this together. This song speaks of the Christ who's overcome. By death, he has conquered death. Are you grateful for that? That the grave is not our home? Some of you are thankful. Are you, grave, are you grateful that the grave is not our home? Can we lift a praise to the Lord? Thank Him for that.
son of the virgin died Majesty now made a mockery This is God crucified The word of the Father an offering the bridegroom was pierced for his bride His last breath said, Father, forgive them This is God crucified By death you conquered death The tomb has been destroyed Oh Christ, you have overcome, you have Resting from 
Give the Lord praise all over the room. Come on. Oh, come on. This is good news. This is good news. Give the Lord all the glory. happy tonight can we give Jesus praise from the depths of our hearts just one more time Are you ready to seek the Lord tonight? I think we've been doing that for the last 70 minutes. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Yes. Can we please thank our worship team and our choir? Love you all so much. You're welcome to go back to your seats. What a night so far. Pastor Benny is with us tonight. And he is going to teach for a few minutes on prayer. How blessed are we? Aren't we blessed? And then after he teaches, we're going to pray. Does that sound good? I'm so proud of you all for turning up to seek the Lord on a Sunday night. How wonderful. Who's receiving the offering? David. All right. Before David gets started, I'm just going to wait. I know there's a lot of choir members finding their seats. Wasn't that wonderful? Are you happy? You're allowed to be. I think we need the joy of the Lord in this crazy world, don't we? Hey, Amy. What you got in there? Just the baby. Candace had her baby. The, the baby's like, oh, Mrs. Gray, you're here. Jethro's a tank. He's a big baby. And Candace is doing well. I heard the midwife rolled her eyes at Candace, and Candace rebuked her mid-labor. That's Candace. I think that's awesome. <laughs> Never roll your eyes at a woman who's delivering a baby, right? Uh, thank God for the midwife, I'm sure. She loves the Lord, hopefully. Tonight, uh, before we receive the offering, before Pastor Benny comes, I, I, I want you to hear something that revolutionized my own heart when it comes to worshiping the Lord as a people when we gather. You do know there's only one worship service. So I want that to settle, and I'm, I'm sure many of you are wondering, you know, what I'm talking about. But there's just one. We join and approach a heavenly Zion, the Scripture says. Do you remember when Jesus told the disciples that, that they, some would not pass until they saw the kingdom. Do you remember what happened right after that? He took Peter, James, and John to the Mount of Transfiguration, and they beheld the kingdom manifest. That tells me something, that that is a divine expression of what the kingdom is. The kingdom is not a set of principles. The kingdom is a person. It is the king. When Moses encountered the Lord... On Sinai, if you read it carefully in the Hebrew, 
It paints the picture that heaven and Sinai collided. And so Moses experienced the Lord as his own food. Literally, without food and water, he encountered the Lord. When we seek the Lord together as a church, I want us to understand the holy privilege it is that we come by the Spirit to the very throne room of the Lord. And that that is the setting by which heaven and earth meet. What a privilege, huh? We don't seek the Lord tonight just to get things done. The Lord will accomplish it. And we're going to ask him because he taught us to ask. And there's much we need. I mean, we need to see some mountains cast into the sea. But the great privilege of seeking the Lord together and worshiping is that we join the billions of angels. That we join the elders. That we gladly cast down whatever crowns he's given us at his feet. And that we have one message. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. To receive all glory. All honor. And while our eyes cannot see him in the natural. We come into his presence by faith and by the spirit tonight. What a wonder Jesus is. I said what a wonder Jesus is. Amen. Amen. David would you come? David will receive the offering and then Pastor Benny will lead us. And then we're going to seek the Lord together. And then uh, as a church, we're going to pray with Pastor Benny about his trip to, to Kenya. Amen. All right, David, it's all yours. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Don't you just feel the presence of the Lord so strong in this place? Thank you, Jesus. I just want to remind us tonight who we are giving to. We're not just giving an offering to Jesus' image. We're not just putting, we're not just doing this because this is what you do. Tonight, we are giving to the Lord himself, something that he deserves and something that he asks for. And I just want to read in Psalm 96, verse 4. This is who we're giving to. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. For he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. And then listen to this. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. We are not just giving because that's what we do as church people. We are giving tonight because the Lord has asked it and because the Lord is worthy of it. Do you trust the Lord tonight? Do you trust the Lord? I've been thinking all day about what Pastor, was, Pastor Michael was talking about this morning of, of fearing the Lord. And I don't believe, church, that we can fully understand the fear of the Lord until we take the Lord at his word. How can we come in here and worship the Lord with songs and singing and singing that he's taken captivity captive and conquered death by death, but then hold back something that the Lord asks for himself? It is our joy and it is our obligation and our responsibility and our honor to be able to trust the Lord at what he says and obey him and not just come in and offer songs of praise and worship, but also our job and our honor to be able to offer him something costly to us. I heard a great man of God say that you can tell where, a, where the Lord sits in the Lord's life, or sorry, you can tell where the Lord sits in someone's life based off of where he sits in their finances. It is our obligation to honor the Lord, to take him at his word, and to give to him what is due, because he is worthy of it. He is so worthy of it. What a joy and what a privilege to be able to give to the Lord. Amen? So let me pray for you as you give. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the joy and the honor to be able to take you at your word, to trust you, and Lord, to give to you tonight in your presence. We give directly to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for your church, Lord, that as they give, Lord, that you would bless them. Lord, that you would bless your people as they are faithful to your word. 
We love you tonight, Jesus. And may this offering, this tithe, this offering of sacrifice to you be something pleasing. We bless you tonight and we thank you for being able to gather as your people and to come together and to give you this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. If you want to give in person, our ushers will be going around with an envelope. You can simply slip up your hand and our ushers will be able to give you an envelope and you can rush the buckets and drop those off up here. If you're watching online, there should be some text to give options there for you as well as in the room. You can scan that QR code or text to give and we'll be right back in just a moment.
you ready? Are you ready? You're hungry tonight? You're hungry for the presence of the Lord? For the truth of his word? This morning was wonderful. What a precious presence this morning and tonight. Very quickly before Pastor Benny comes, uh, this coming Wednesday, I will be speaking at youth, okay? So all of you youth, you parents of youth, get them there. I'm going to pray for the young people and believe the Lord to touch them with his raw power. Amen? Amen? We need that more than ever. We need a, a generation baptized and filled and charged with the precious power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Jessica will be ministering consistently there as well. Pastor Benny wants to come minister to the youth. We're invested in this next generation. Uh, the devil will not have them. It's just not going to happen. The Lord, they belong to the Lord Jesus. Amen? Okay, so that's this Wednesday. If you're watching, if you're youth, get there. If you're not youth, as I said this morning, you can watch from the outside and stretch your hands. <laughs> um, Jesus 24 is actually right around the corner. That's incredible. I, come on, you can do better than that. Um, this house has been called to impact the nations and this nation. Uh, it's the Lord's desire for this. And so what I'm asking you all to do is to join us in California. I want us to go out there and bring what the Lord has been doing here for the last 10 years. Can you believe that we, we have conducted 10 year end events, which is the reason my beard is turning white <laughs> at a rapid pace. And uh, it feels like we just finished Jesus 23 and uh, we're already getting ready for Jesus 24, but the West Coast is ready, it's prime, and I want us to bring what the Lord is doing here, there. So begin to make your plans. I'm telling you, it's a mission field out there, but God is moving. Let's go be a church that's preaching the gospel, laying hands on the sick. You can come in early. God, is, God will be moving. Uh, God will use you in an incredible way. So that would be incredible. If you're there on the West Coast or not, if you're anywhere around the world, to our friends in Asia, Singapore. I mean, gosh, what a response we've gotten from Singapore. And, and so much of Asia, somebody just went like this. You're from Singapore, huh? Now, you don't have to fly across America. Get to Jesus 24. This is going to be a sacred time, I'm telling you. It's a historic building. Pastor Benny, I think, had one of his greatest meetings ever there, that youth meeting in 2003. That's when I, right before I came to, to work with Pastor Benny, uh, Miss Kuhlman is preached in that building, as I said. Full Gospel businessmen's in that building. Uh, there is something about that region that the Lord uses to launch and catalyze movements. Billy Graham, the Vineyard, Jesus People, Calvary Chapel, Melody Land, right? Let's step into this narrative of God and let's ask him to use us, all right? Um, lastly, Phoenix is right around the corner next month. We will be, uh, uh, not finishing, but we will be worshiping the Lord and preaching the gospel at our next leg of the West Coast Tour, which is in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, hundreds have registered already. It is going to be awesome. So if you're in the Phoenix area, anywhere in the desert, maybe we should do a desert Jesus tour one time, <laughs> not in the summer. But if you're anywhere in that area, California, Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, come see us. It would be such an honor to worship the Lord alongside you. And let me just say this. We have not forgotten about Orlando. Our hearts are here. This is home. This is uh, where God has called us. Uh, that we will have the pastor's conference in September. Jessica has her first, can I, can I say it? She has her first women's conference coming. <laughs> <laughs> Woo-wee! <laughs> Cornet, she's so happy. <laughs> oh my Lord, the hoops are gonna be out in full effect, big old hoops are gonna be out in full effect at that women's conference. I'm preaching the women's conference. It's my first women's conference I've ever preached. So, I'm just gonna talk about Jesus because I don't know what else to say to you guys. And um, we're praying through and talking about right now something that we can do at the end of the year uh, in Orlando. Maybe we do it here or in a bigger sanctuary, but set aside two days, maybe three days of a holy 
convocation type where we seek the Lord together and call the nations to be in his presence. Amen. So we have not forgotten about Orlando. We are invested here and committed here like never before. Amen. Okay. Well, it's such a joy and honor to have Pastor Benny. I asked Jesse to introduce him, but he said I would do a better job. I don't want to sound prideful, but I couldn't agree more. And <laughs> but let me say this. I want to prep your heart. Uh, when I read Good Morning Holy Spirit, I still have the letter I wrote to the Lord in my Bible. This is what I, it's still in my, the Bible I keep at home. I read Good Morning Holy Spirit and discovered the beautiful privilege and wonder of spending time with the Lord. And so I wrote the Lord a letter in my Bible. At the time, my dad, who was uh, on the financial advisory team for the Orthodox Church and, uh, very Greek family that we are. My dad was not born again. And I was reading Good Morning and I was reading about Pastor Benny's testimony about his father and how the Lord touched him as a 12 year old boy and I had gotten touched as a 12 year old boy. So I told the Lord in the letter, Lord, you touched Pastor Benny at 12. It seems you, it seems you touched me at 12. You touched Pastor Benny's father. Would you please save my dad? And then I asked him to use me for his glory. And then at the bottom of the letter I wrote, it would be wonderful to serve and work for Pastor Benny one day. A 12 year old boy. And so that was my introduction to the privilege of spending time with Jesus. Then in 2003, I saw Jesse again for the first time. This is a good intro, I think. This is a wonderful flow. Okay. <laughs> and my brother sent me a picture of her from Tulsa, Oklahoma when she was at ORU. Her mustache was gone. Because the last time I saw her was here when she was eight. She had a little mustache. Her eyebrows connected. There was great, great unity between her eyebrows. They connected. We preach unity here all the time. Oneness. <laughs> I don't believe in division unless it's your eyebrows. Split them down the middle. <laughs> and then he sent me this picture and I thought, my God, time heals everything. <laughs> this is a beautiful girl. And he said, uh, my brother said, hey, I think I'm going to marry her cousin. I, I think you should consider her. I saw the picture. I'm like, I'm down. Didn't take much. <laughs> Didn't take much. Men aren't that complicated, huh? So I flew out in 03. And uh, Pastor Benny opened the door and he said, I remember you, where have you been? And something shot through my, through my soul. Because I was running from the call of God. It wasn't like, where have you been location wise? Where have you been? It, it felt like a word from the Lord. And so the deal was, he took us out for tea. I don't know if you remember, we went out to tea and, and uh, with Jess and, and Suzanne. And you said, look, if you're gonna marry my daughter, I need to know you. He goes, I do love you. I think you're awesome, but you have to come live in my house and be my assistant for free. And Jess goes, well, dad, what if he does a good job? No, he said, no promises. You know, there's only really one way into the will of God. You got to die and go low. I love that. I love the narrative of God. I'm so grateful for the posture that Pastor Benny took with us. And so I got to live in the house and this is what marked me the most outside of Abbott and Costello and the Three Stooges. As impacting as that was, what marked me was this, that I knew in the mornings he was upstairs with the Lord. And that was probably, not probably, most certainly, the most impacting, tangible experience of discipleship I have ever experienced. Remember what, what, the, what the disciples of the Lord said to Jesus. Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Discipleship 101 is, this is how you seek the Lord. And Pastor Benny taught me that. I knew for two hours in the morning not to get near his room. I knew his Bible was open and he was seeking God. And I was eternally impacted. So I want us all to just stand and receive as hungry children tonight from a father to us all, uh, 
someone who's going to break the bread of life and teach us the wonder of seeking Jesus. Amen. Can we welcome Pastor Benny? Thank you. You are so kind. Thank you. Please be seated and thank you and love you too and thank you, Michael. Oh, I remember those lovely years. The Lord has done much, huh? I was looking at this amazing young people you had here earlier worshiping and then when they sang the song you had written and I said to Jess, I said, look what God has given you. It's just amazing to see all these fabulous young people here. Wow. To Jesus be the praise, huh? And I think about <clears throat> what God has done in this very building since 84 when we built it. And look at what God is doing now. I, I would have never believed had someone said to me back then that one day this building would be used where my children would be ministering. I would have said, well, you know, only God can do that. He's doing it. I mean, I walk, when we drove in tonight, I'm thinking, wow, look at this parking lot out there, so packed. Just brought back amazing memories. How many of you are young people here, by the way? Let me just see one more time, all the young people. Uh, it's a young people church, isn't it? Mostly. And it's really amazing, you know, what God is doing. Jesse too, yes, he's young, of course. Even those that are not young feel young right now. They're right there, see that? And I want to say thank you to the Lord for all he's done. So can we all stand up and thank him? Because he's the one who has done all this. Wow. Go, please. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> to you be the praise. We say this with all our hearts. To you be all the praise. Yours wonderful Jesus, wonderful Savior. To you belongs the glory, the honor, the power, dominion, majesty, and authority. You are God Almighty. Who are we, Lord? Like David said, who am I and who is my Father's house? Who are we, Lord, that we should be your children and your servants? truly amazing grace and I pray that this night you'll bless your people who are here and those who are watching around the world bless them Lord with your word with your knowledge the knowledge of you who you are thank you for what you're about to do and thank you for all you've done over the years Truly, Lord, it's overwhelming just thinking about it. And yet there's so much more to do, so much more to see. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. And God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. I was thinking about 2015 when, when we all thought I was going to go home back then. And... Michael and Jessica and Joshua were there with me in the hospital. And I thought, this is it. We're going to go home. And they all thought I was dying. The doctor said, had you been late one day, you'd be gone. Because <clears throat> I had congestive heart failure. And I was just thinking, just sitting here, God kept me alive to see this. I, I, really, I really believe that. God kept me alive to see this. Because what, what, what if that didn't happen back then? Maybe I would be gone by now. Uh, Tashi, my precious Tashi, who's younger than Jesse, called Jessica. She said, you better get over here quick. She said, Daddy isn't doing well. And it was Jessica that came and said, you're going to the doctor now. And you know, she's always been strong. You're going now. And uh, so I was gone, and we all went to this amazing doctor named uh, Dr. Tian Sung from the Philippines. And he looked at me, and he, 
he grabbed my hand, he began crying, and, and didn't even know who he was. He took my hand, he said, I know who you are, I watch you on television, and I will not let you die. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm dying. Because <laughs> here's a doctor out of nowhere, grabbing your hand, I never saw him in my life, I never heard his name, and he grabs my hand, and he starts weeping, the guy starts crying. And he says, I know who you are, been watching you on TV, but I won't let you die. And I'm thinking, oh dear God. And these nurses, well, they took me to, of course, where I had to be taken care of. And the nurses were just running around everywhere. And they gave me LASIK and all that stuff. And, and one of the nurses, I guess, said something or did something she wasn't supposed to. And one of the other nurses says, and she screamed at her. She said, I'm trying to save his life. Stop it. And I thought, oh dear God, this is like, could happen any minute. Well, shalom, you know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> you don't know, you know, I mean, when God wants us all home, we're going to go home. And uh, that was quite a wake-up-upper, that, that things can happen like that. But God had a plan. And my mom, right after that, she said, no, she, she's in heaven now. What an amazing mama I had. And she said, you will, your strength will come back. God is not done with you. And here, you know, this year something starts happening that I never thought would happen again. I thought this is it, you know, I'm 71, this is the time to slow down. And the first lady of Kenya showed up here back in the fall of last year, uh, early fall anyway, September, somewhere there. And she said, we want you to come to our country for a nationwide crusade. And I said, well, I'm not sure if I can do it, but I mean, I'll pray about it. I'm thinking like physically, all that, you know, that's a lot. It takes a lot of, you know, out of you physically and mentally too. And she said, no, she said, the Lord spoke to us that you are the man to come and hold a crusade in our nation, in our capital for the healing of the country. And then she said, we as a nation want to repent and we want you to lead it. And I'm thinking, like, repent about what? I'm not sure what she meant by repent. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, we, ha we have not treated uh, God's servants right. And she said, we didn't feel we, we, you were treated right when you came. And I was there years before that. We had a million people then. And I thought I was treated wonderful. And I said, well, thank you, uh, you know, for what you're saying. But... I'll gladly come for whatever the Lord wants to do. I had no idea uh, back in the fall what kind of, of, of event this will be. This is going to happen next Saturday and Sunday. And I fly out on Wednesday. And it's massive. Every church, and I mean every church, including the Catholic church, is involved. Like every church, nobody has said no because who can say no to the president? <laughs> this is this is literally the, the invitation of the president and his wife. And now I'm told, of course, Marie Dawn is there already. She was sending me pictures and, and text me, and text and all that. Every whoever they are, big name will be there. And uh, people are flying in from even the U.S. that used to work in our crusades years ago. They're all coming back. Uh, even my brothers are coming. I think, oh dear God, this is going to be too much. <laughs> so it's going to be something. But the thing that I want you to pray for, and that's why we're going to pray tonight for this and what God is doing here, what God wants to do. And also, let's pray for this, for this nation here that needs a mighty move of God. But anyways, uh, I'm kind of a little numb and speechless because of what I'm hearing going on over there. Uh, even ambassadors of, dif of different countries are going to be on the platform. Unbelievers. This is not just about, this is called the big billboards. They have billboards all over the city and, and, the, and the country, literally. They have trucks on all the streets with billboards on them. 
in every city. So this will be massive, probably bigger than maybe I'm expecting right now. But I, I, I will never forget what my brother William told me a few weeks ago. He said, he said, the Lord is, is going to give you a short season of doing crusades again. I said, I don't know if I can do it physically. So I went to Ghana a few weeks ago. I'm thinking, the Lord, can I do Ghana and then Kenya and then Nigeria in, at the end of March? I'm thinking, well, only God can give me strength for that. So uh, I didn't think that w would happen, but it's happening. And, I, and I'll, I'm going to tell you something that is really remarkable. Everybody, and I mean everybody, wants Jesus' image to come to their countries. Ghana and now Kenya. And 80% of the population of Kenya are young people. So think about the impact you are going to have after I'm done in those nations. The, the world has never been as hungry for God as they are today. Never in, in all the history of the world. Because everyone knows there's danger ahead. but is afraid of what could happen. And the young people around the world today, I was stunned. And I'm going to start teaching very quickly, but i got to tell you this. I was stunned in, in, uh, in Ghana. There was 10,000 young people in that building, 11,000 outside who couldn't get in every night. Maybe, and they said even more than that, but the first night was 11,000 kids outside. The excitement, the, the, the pull they had on me, I, I, I was just blown away by it. Because everything I would say, they would jump up and start screaming, you know, and pull it out of you. There's the power of God that hit that place. They have a university that can sleep 10,000 kids. 10,000 at one time can sleep on the mountains, this amazing university. Dear Pastor Dag has the largest ministry in all of Ghana. His son Joshua did not want the ministry at all. When I was there years ago, I pulled him out of the crowd and prophesied over him. And today God is using that young man, like all of you, he's young, an amazing family, amazing wife he has, to shake the nation. And he's a young man, he's not an older guy. I'm seeing all these young people today around the world literally shaking their countries for God with boldness, like fire boldness in them. So it gives us hope about tomorrow for even this country here. So thank God for it. And the people said? Amen. So tonight when we, let's just look at the scriptures. And I'm going to have Dion help me. And David, would you mind helping? Where are you? You're right there, David, my David. Okay. You, do, you did a good job, David, doing the offering. And I'm really happy that I'm about to, in a few days, and it was have another granddaughter. I'm really pr very pleased and happy. <laughs> He'll make it eight grandchildren now. Well, uh, three right here, and Tasha has two, and now you got two, that's seven, and little Eliana is in the oven. Hopefully she stays there. Oh, uh, yeah, she's... What a precious, precious uh, baby she's going to be. Two, three beautiful granddaughters. Wow. I'm a blessed man. All right. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 1. And um, this is very, and I'm going to just take about half an hour to minister the word, and then we're going to pray, because I think it's important to see the power of prayer. Uh, Acts 1 verse 8, please, Dion, and Acts 1 verse 4. Well, actually, Dion, you can read verse 8 and 4, and then David is going to read Isaiah 40 verse 31. But let's begin with Acts 1 verse 8. And Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do. People said, Amen. Okay, let's go. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Okay, now let's look at Acts 1-4, please. 
and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. So waiting on God is what brought the power later. If you want God to use you, there's only one answer, prayer. There's such incredible power that is released when we really are serious about prayer. Not selfish prayers, true prayer. Isaiah 40, verse 31, David, please. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. This is a very interesting and powerful verse. They that wait upon the Lord, upon the Lord, upon the Lord means there's a relationship here. They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength, meaning spiritually. We can have no strength against the enemy or the flesh without prayer. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, means they will know the current of the winds of the Spirit. Because when you pray, you, be, you, you begin to discern where the winds are. And you begin to know when to surrender to them. The Holy Spirit is like wind. You do, not, you do not know where it's coming from or going to. You cannot fight that wind when it, it comes your way. The only thing you can do is spread your wings and surrender to that wind and it'll carry you. So in prayer, we receive discernment on where the winds are moving and how to surrender to those winds at the right moment. We begin to know the currents of the winds of the spirit. That's how you surrender. And then it says they shall run, meaning you're going to catch up with where, with where God wants you to be. And in the Christian life, running comes before walking, not the other way around. Because you have to catch up before you can walk and fellowship with the Lord. So prayer not only gives you strength and discernment, it gives you speed. Where you catch up with God and catch up with where you've the things you have lost are right back. There's restoration in prayer. And it happens very quickly when you pray properly. And I'm going to show you what it says about that. So, let's, let's ask these questions. Whom does God hear? Well, let's look at these scriptures. Luke 18 Dion, let's look at verse 9 through 14 because it says something very important that God hears those who are humble before him. And then, David, you're going to read Psalm 34, 15 and 17. But let's first read Luke 18, 9 through 14. Dion, please. And he spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, as extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And heard. Only the humble are heard. Number two, the righteous, Psalm 34, 15 and 17. And then, Leon, you're going to go to Psalm 145, verse 18 and 19. But God hears the humble and the righteous, Psalm 34, verse 15, David, and verse 17. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, 
and his ears are upon unto their cry, are open unto their cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The righteous means God's children. No, God does not hear sinners. The only prayer that he'll hear is, save me, Lord, when it comes to a sinner. Because he only hears his children. I know some people don't like that, but it's in the Bible. It's right there. You just read it. The Lord hears the righteous. When the righteous cry, the Lord hears, not when the sinner cries. So the only prayer that God will hear a sinner when he prays is when he says, save me, Lord. And then he'll hear them after that. And then the Lord here will hear those who fear him. Psalm 145, verse 18 and 19. And then, David, you're going to read for us later, 1 John 3, 22. But let's read it there, Dion. Psalm 145, verse 18 and 19, please. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him, he also will hear their cry and will save them. It's wonderful, isn't it? God hears the humble, the righteous, and those who fear him. And fear him means they stand in awe of him. They revere him. And then in 1 John 3, 22, David, whom does God hear? And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. You got it. Do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Read that again, please. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. First John 3, verse 22. Okay? You got that, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, prevailing prayer, though, is possible only when we do one thing, and that is in John 15, verse 7, Dion, Abiding in Jesus is the greatest secret of, of prevailing prayer. You cannot truly pray without being connected to the Lord, abiding in him. So let's read that, John 15, verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So you, you see the key here, that prevailing prayer is impossible without abiding in the Lord because it says, if you abide in me, whatever you ask, I'll give you. I'm just giving you scriptures, not my opinion here. So like a branch has no independent life on its own, so we, even our prayers, become the outcome of the life of Jesus in us. Can I say it again? So, like a branch has no independent life without the vine. So we, even our prayers become the outcome of his life in us, who is the vine. Because he said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Meaning when we pray, it is the outcome of his life in each one of us. That's not we are praying, that's the spirit of prayer in us. That's why we have to wait upon the Lord. The secret I learned about prayer is waiting. Waiting quickens you to pray. Otherwise, all you do is repeat words that mean nothing. It is better, it is better to have a heart without words than words without a heart. Can I say it again? It is better to have a heart without words than words without a heart. Because when you pray, it's your heart talking. And a lot of people will not wait upon the Lord. They just start talking. And that doesn't go nowhere because there's no heart behind it. And that is when selfish prayer begins because all they talk about is themselves. Or they pray things that are not truly even biblical to think about. Like, please, Lord, kill my enemies, or whatever. <laughs> they, they, they pray selfish prayers, things that are not biblical at all, see? So it's important to wait upon the Lord. Let him quicken you. Psalm 80, verse 18 is a powerful verse. It says, quicken me, and then I'll call on you. 
you, you, you wait for God to quicken your spirit. So let's put that beautiful verse up for them. Psalm 80, verse 80, like 80, verse 18. It says, quicken me, Lord, and then I'll call on you. Is that up there yet? Yep. Uh, I thought it was. Okay. So, Psalm, uh, I may have given you the wrong scripture. Okay. So we will not go back, quicken us, and we will call upon your name. So only when you really wait can God quicken you. So this is important, very, very important, that you wait upon the Lord. Let God Almighty do the work within you. And all you need to do is just wait. Let him do it. All right. Now, prayer has power. The, the minute that prayer begins to work in you, the real prayer, that is heart prayer rather than mind prayer. Brain-produced prayers will do nothing. Wait till God quickens your heart, and then you'll hear yourself pray. You will be amazed by what you'll say to the Lord, because it's coming from the Holy Spirit. Remember, we know not how to pray as we ought. Okay? So we're talking about praying in the Spirit, not with the Spirit. With the Spirit is tongues. That's mysteries unto God. We don't even know what we're saying. And that is also important, and I'm not going to get into that tonight. But most prayer meetings are tongues, where they're really, many times it's praise more than prayer. But anyways, and the reason I say it is because there are three kinds of tongues that the Bible talks about, and I don't want to get, get into this. But... The important things, the important thing, or maybe I should tell you quickly since I said it. The first <laughs> prayer in tongues was in Acts 2 when they understood what they were saying and they were praising the Lord. And these were real languages. The second is where you speak mysteries unto God that no one understands. So the first time you see tongues, they all understood what they were saying in, in the book of Acts in, in Jerusalem. But then Paul writes about how it's mysteries that no one understands. That's a different tongue than, than the one in Acts 2. And the third one is the tongue that has, has been interpreted as prophecy. So there are three types of tongues. So when people pray most of the time, they really praise the Lord. And we need that because praise drives them, really all demons out. Praise is very powerful. Okay? Now... Prayer in the Spirit is what really has results. Is when you wait and, and look, look, it's going to happen tonight right here. Amen. And, and the reason I know it is because the atmosphere is moist already. It's not, it won't take long for that quickening to happen in you. Now, the minute that prayer begins, number one, it will reveal you to you. In Isaiah 6, 5, let's read that quickly, please, Dion. And uh, David, you're going to read Psalm 19, verse 12 and 13. But that prayer literally has such power that when you begin to pray, God reveals yourself to yourself. And that's important. So it says in Isaiah 6, verse 5, Dion. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. God could not have used them till he saw himself. Because the second you see yourself, you throw yourself upon the Lord. You become dependent upon him completely. And then God says, who will go? And Isaiah said, I'm ready. So he could not be ready till he saw himself. I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. When Peter fell and said, Lord, I'm a sinner, depart from me, he said, now you're going to win souls. You have to see who you are before, you, before you, you can see who God is in you. I, I think you missed this one. You have to see your weakness before you see his strength. Your inability before you see his power. You come to the place to say, who am I and who is my father's house? I can't do this. I think I all told you many times, 
Uh, you know, when, when I would be in those crusades, I would sit and look, Lord, and I would look at that crowd and say, Lord, who am I even to be standing here? Because I knew myself more than anybody else. So you give God the glory. Amen. It's not you doing it anyways. So prayer reveals you to you. And prayer in Psalm 19, verse 12 and 13 says, will cleanse you from secret sins. Okay, David, go ahead. Psalm 19, 12 and 13. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Powerful. That prayer will not only reveal your sins to you, it will deliver you from them. Secret sins means you don't know them. God reveals your inner self to you first, and then he, he will reveal your sins to you. And now there's a cry that says, Lord, don't let them have dominion over my life. There's a, a cry for holiness as a result of God revealing your weaknesses. And then, this is something powerful. Psalm 17, verse 5, Dion. And then you're going to go to Psalm 141, verse 3. But in Psalm 17, verse 5, it says something powerful. Go ahead, Dion. Hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. Aha. Uh -huh. Lord, hold me up so I won't slip. Now, these are all prayers of the saints. Don't let me fall, Lord. Don't let me slip, Lord. Hold me up. Only prayer has power to hold you up and keep you going. So when you pray, think about what I'm telling you. It'll reveal you to you. It'll reveal your sins to your heart so you can cry to God. It, will, it has power to hold you up and keep you going with God so you won't slip. And then here's Psalm 141, verse 3. David, please. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. You know what is so remarkable? When you pray, nothing filthy will come out of your lips. You always know when somebody has prayed, they speak holy things. And you know when somebody has not been praying, all the filth comes out. Well, it's, 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 it's quite clear that prayer keeps your mouth under control. So simple. Read that again, please, David. Psalm 141, verse 3. Set a watch, O Lord, before Set my mouth. Set a watch, O Lord, over my tongue. Keep going. Keep the door of my lips. Yeah, keep that mouth of mine locked up. <laughs> That's what he said by door. Keep the door of my lips. Control my tongue, Lord. And, here's, and, and this is all the part of prayer. Now, here is something that is so remarkable to me, and that's in Psalm 119, verse 18, Dion, that happens to you as you pray, you begin to see what? Look at that. Psalm 119, verse 18, Dion. It says, Oh, open thy mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Open my eyes, Lord, so I can... Watch and see wondrous things out of your word. The part of prayer is so powerful, it unlocks the Bible for you. It reveals the word to you. In a way, there's no way you can see it any other way. But the minute you pray, it's like the, the fog lifts. The, the blockage goes, and it's clear. And you see the wondrous word of the Lord. And now, here's something that is so blessed. And that's in Acts 2, 4. When you pray, there's such power that the Holy Spirit will come upon your life in fullness. Because it says in Acts 2, 4, David, Acts 2, 4, something very familiar to all of us. So please go and let me hear you. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, that power came as a result of prayer because the Lord said, wait till you've been endued with power in Acts, 4, uh, in Acts 1. Now, the power comes. So, this is very important. In this very building, the Lord spoke to me years ago to have prayer meetings at 6 a.m. on Tuesdays and 6 a.m. on Saturdays. And I was never and still am not a morning 
person. But the Lord said, I want you there at 6 a.m. every Tuesday with the people, pray with them, then they can go. This place was as full as this at 6 a.m. With people praying. Every Tuesday, we had this crowd here at 6 a.m. And here's what I said. I said, if I'm coming, you better come. <laughs> and they came. Then on Saturday, they came. And the power of God hit this building about four or five months later that just didn't stop for years. Because when you pray, the glory comes. And the lines were so, after that, the lines were so massive outside, you couldn't get near that building on Sunday or Wednesday nights. Because that's what prayer does. It wasn't because of us. We just took God at, at his word that when we pray that, that the Holy Ghost will fall. And he did. And the face of Jesus showed up on that wall for eight weeks. See that wall right there under that sound board? The Lord's face showed up for eight weeks there. And we thought first it was the lights. It was not the lights. When we shut the lights, it was still there. And what was so remarkable that people saw with, that, with, with, with their eyes. When I would preach, his mouth would move on the wall in this room. People came from all over the world to see the Lord's face on the wall. Because we were praying. Get praying. Take this seriously. Messages will do great things, but when you pray, God will come in. Amen. And the greater will happen, not the great will. Greater than these shall you do when you pray. You're about to enter, you as a ministry, are about to enter the, into the most amazing season of your life Amen. on the condition you pray. And you have to do what we did. For months, this didn't just go for a few weeks. We prayed every Tuesday morning for months, every Saturday for months. People came from all over just to pray in the morning. And I only would, I, I kept them here for one hour from six to seven so they can go and work. And people pack this place out to pray. Lord, do it again. Yes. All right, now. Let me talk to you quickly about a few other things that happened to the Lord himself that I think are powerful. Then we're going to stop and pray. Because I'm going to show you what happened to him as he prayed. But first, uh, Jeremiah 31, verse 9, David. Prayer, Michael and Jesse, prayer will cause you to walk by the rivers of God. Where you will not stumble and make mistakes. When you pray like we were about to pray tonight, the rivers will flow and you will not stumble. The reason people stumble is they don't pray. So Jeremiah 31 verse 9, please on the screen, very, very powerful verse. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. They're, they're going to come praying because it says with supplications, I will lead them. I will cause them to walk by what? The rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. When we pray, we don't make mistakes like we do when we don't pray. They will not stumble, for I'm a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. But look at this amazing promise that when we come with weeping and supplication, God will lead us. Number two, he'll cause us to walk by the rivers. Because we don't know where they are, but he does. And in a straight way, not crooked way. And we will not stumble. That's quite marvelous, isn't it? That's what prayer does. Now, let's talk about the Lord. Let's go to Luke th uh, 3, verse 31, Dion, and Mark 1, 35, David. And this is very quickly, but very important to see that the Lord himself understood the power. So Luke 3, verse 21, Dion, please. It says, Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. All right, now, why, why did he pray? It says, he knew what? He knew that prayer will give him strength to face the devil later. Because he was tempted after that. So being baptized and praying, the heavens open. 
he, he wasn't talking to some person. He was talking to his father while being baptized. That's where the, the, the key in baptism is. When you get baptized, don't just talk to someone. Start praying right in that baptismal tank. Because there's power with that. And Jesus knew he would need the power of God for it. So he began his ministry with prayer. When he, when he was baptized, he, he just began his ministry in prayer. Number two, in Mark 135, it said the anointing that he had received was kept because of prayer. Mark 135, please. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. So it says that he prayed in the morning. The anointing he received in the baptism while praying in Luke 3 was kept later on his life. Because no matter, please hear this, no matter how powerful the anointing on a life is, it is sustained only as you pray. Amen. And the Lord knew that. So he receives the anointing, praying as he's being baptized. He maintains it as he kept praying. And in Luke 3, 6 and 11 and 12, it was prayer that kept him safe from the evil plans of the Pharisees. Look at Luke 6, 11 and 12. The answer, sorry. It says, And they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray. Stop, stop, wait. They were planning to harm him. What did he do after that? He went and prayed. You see the connection. The, the plans were dismantled when he prayed. One more time. This is important. And they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Ah, now you have to connect both together. Keep it on that screen. They wanted to harm the Lord. They wanted to stop him. But he knew the secret, didn't he? In verse 11, they were filled with madness. Rage is the Greek word. They were planning one with another what to do to stop him. And you have to re remember they had a lot of authority given to them by Rome. They could have done something if they wanted to. But those plans were canceled in verse 12. Because in verse 12, let's go to it, please. In those days, he went out to a mountain. Prayed all night. He knew exactly why he was praying. It was prayer that kept him safe from his enemies. It will keep you safe from yours. If there's something planned against you, and who knows, maybe somebody needs this, get on your knees and pray. It'll be dismantled in one night. I don't care what it is. I've, I've, I've had it happen in my, in my own life, whether it's lawsuits or you name it. Prayer, fix it all up. But people just won't, won't take the time. They just cry for five minutes and then go, uh-uh. Stay till you know it's done. I did that for years. I remember a man named David Maines in Canada who began Crossroads in Huntley Street, was a dear friend of our family, a great saint of God. I went to him one day, I said, why am I under attack? He said, to keep you on your knees, Benny. Sometimes that's why God allows attacks. <laughs> keep you in prayer, keep you safe. Okay, Luke 6.13. All decisions that the Lord made were made in prayer. Luke 6, 13, David. And then you're going to read John 6, 15 through 21, Dion. 
I'm just giving you the Bible. I'm not talking, I'm just giving you the Bible. And Jessica is very happy about that. <laughs> Luke 6, 13, please, David. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. S Simon, whom now, he also... Now, now you've got you've to remember, you have to connect it to what we just read earlier. Did you see that or not? Let's go back to Luke 6. Let's look at verse 13. Uh, sorry, verse, verse 11. They were filled with madness. Verse 12. Verse 12. He prayed and dismantled their madness and plans. And verse 13. He chose disciples. It was all prayer that did it. So he, they, they wanted to harm him. He prayed and canceled that one. And he prayed, and after he prayed, the next thing it says, when the day came, he prayed all night, right? Tucker, are you listening? He prayed all night. He prayed all night. That must have said something else on here. But then when he got up in the morning, he chose disciples, which means God told him who to choose while he was praying at night. Comprende? It's all there. All right, let's look at something else. This is very powerful. John 6, 15 through 21. Um, I want to show you how it was the Lord's prayer that saved Peter. It's the Lord's prayer. Because of prayer, God's plan was saved, and later his disciples' lives were saved. Let me show it to you. We've got to put a few verses together here to show you this, okay? And the life of Peter was saved because of prayer. So John 6, 15 through 21, Dion, please. And when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when even was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea. Now let's stop a minute here because you're, they, we, we, we're going to miss a lot here because it's so powerful. So reread that verse 15 and I'm going to stop you and say something, please. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force. By force to make him a king, he prayed to, dis to dismantle their plan and save God's plan of salvation. Because had they made him king, you and I will not be sitting here right now. And then, keep going. And when evening was come, his disciples went down unto the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. Keep going. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh and unto the ship, and they were afraid. Keep but, going. But he said unto them, It is I, do not be afraid. Look at verse 21. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship... Immediately the ship was at land. That means he saved their life from death or otherwise the ship would not have been translated to the land the storm was so severe their life was saved by that ship literally moving right like this to the land what did it prayer because in what we what you just saw it says when they came to make him king he went alone to pray to dismantle their plans to make him king and now they're on the boat. His disciples are on the boat. A storm hits. He comes walking. And the second he gets in the boat, he, he didn't say, peace, be still. The whole, that whole world went right to the land. What did it? Prayer. Maybe you never, you, you've never seen those scriptures in your life. Well, I'm glad I'm showing them to you. But let me show you something else. I'm going to show you. I can shout now, but I'll behave myself. This is so incredibly powerful. It's even blessing me. Good, it's right. 
I'm going to take you to John 6:44. Now, David, you're going to read three portions for me. In fact, you're going to read John 6:44, and then you're going to read Luke 9:18. And then you're going to read Matthew 16, 13 to 17, because it's one connection here. And the connection is, the connection is that it was prayer that revealed Jesus to Peter. Remember when he said, whom do men say that I am? He said, you're the Christ. It was the Lord's prayer earlier that cause Peter to say those words. I'm going to show it to you. But we can see all three together. So, prayer revealed Jesus to Peter and set in motion God's plan for Peter's life. So let's begin with John 6, 44. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. Okay? So that is clear. No man can come to me except the Father sends him to me, and I'll raise him up at the last day. Good. Now let's go to Luke 9, 18. Keep and it going. came to pass, as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? Now what was he doing before he asked them that question? Praying. Read that again, David. And it came to pass, as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? Okay, now, Matthew 16 does not say that he was praying. We see it in Luke 9 that he was praying. Now let's go to Matthew 16. Let's look at verse 13 to 17. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I am? Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now this is amazing to me, because if you put Luke and Matthew together, you find that it was the prayer of Jesus that caused Peter to say what he said. Because I just showed you in John, no man can come without the Father bringing him. No man can come. No man would know who I am, in other words, is what Jesus was saying. Then you put that together with Luke. He was praying before he ever said, whom do men say I am? You go to, to this amazing portion in the Gospel of Matthew. It doesn't mention him praying. It just says, he asked the question. And Peter says, you're the Christ. You put all that together, you come with one answer. It was the prayer of Jesus that opened the eyes of Peter. How powerful prayer is. And finally, Luke 22, verse 31 to 22. I think you all know that, but I think what happened earlier that I showed you in John 6, that it was prayer that, got, that saved the disciples. What if they were dead? Peter would not have been able to hear these words from the Lord, which we're, we're about to read. Luke 22, please, Dion, verse 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he might sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when okay. thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So, when you look at the life of Jesus, it was prayer in Luke 3 that brought the power of God on his life. Number two, it was prayer that maintained the power of God on his life. Number three, it was prayer that kept him safe from the Pharisees' plan. Number four, all decisions were made by prayer in his life. Number five, it was because of prayer, John 6, that God's plan was rescued and the disciples' lives were rescued. Number six, it was because of prayer that Peter understood who Jesus was. And finally, it was prayer that saved Peter from the devil himself who wanted to destroy him. Joel, go ahead. 
I need you. Now, once I've given you all that, you need to pray. And all I gave you is the Bible. I didn't give you my opinions. But I want to give you one more portion. You got to look at the difference, at the change. This has been one of the most blessed portions in my life that I've looked and read over and over. Psalm 3, verse 1 to 6. I want you to see the change in David's life when he prayed. What was his condition like before he prayed? And what was his condition like after he prayed? Before he prayed, he said, Lord, I have many enemies. More than I can count. After he prayed, he said, I don't care. I'm going to go and take a nap. And then I'm not afraid if there's thousands of them. So Psalm 3 on the screen, please. Verse 1 through 6. Lord, oh dear God, I've been there. How are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. He was in trouble. Maybe it's you right now that's feeling like that. Anybody feels like that? Put your hands up high. Come on. Up, up, up. I want to sit high. Okay, Nathan. I'm going to give you the, the way out. I faced more troubles in my life than you'll ever face in your life. When a major network came to destroy me. And I prayed. It was so dangerous. And when I prayed, peace filled my soul in such a way I didn't care. And I got on TBN, did behind the scenes that same day. And a preacher called me in California and said, how do, you, how, how do you do this? I said, why? He said, you're so joyful, and they're going to destroy you tonight on TV. I said, nobody can destroy me. I said, if God called me, nobody can touch me. I said, if they can, dest if they can destroy me, I don't need them to destroy me. I would have destroyed myself. Had God not called me, I would not be even here. And I was so rejoicing on on the TBN that that preacher in California thought I was lying to him. And Otto Roberts was watching and Evelyn and I went to their home and they said through your eyes Benny we saw God on that program because I was completely at peace. That psalm did it in my life because when I read that I said this is my answer. Imagine if a whole network came to destroy you. You've not had that happen have you? I have. Three times, not just once. How are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Even on my staff, people were being paid by the network to talk. I was walking up here, back behind that wall, having been told by a major network, well, I'll tell you, it was CNN, that our staff was talking to them. It was, I was so troubled by that. Like, how can they betray the work, the work of the Lord? And I'm walking with, with the main man that did the, the broadcast. He was the uh, fellow that did the story. He and I became friends, surprisingly. And I'll never forget, I said, who's talking to you? He said, if I would tell you, you'd, you'd, you'd have a heart attack. That's what he said to me. He said, if I should tell you who's talking to us, you'll have a heart attack. I said, don't tell me. But that psalm kept me. How are they increased the trouble, including on your staff? Let's pray. It'll never happen here. Many are they that rise up against me. Number two, verse, next verse. Next verse. Many there be which say, there's no help for him. <laughs> I've been there too. It's over for you. Goodbye. There's a guy out there, used to be our uh, maintenance guy. I'll never forget walking outside, baby, walking out here. And he was uh, cleaning the grass or this or that. He said, well, how come you're so happy they're going to destroy you tonight? The guy that was working on staff, cutting the grass out there, thought this is it. This is over. He, he said, I'm looking for a job because I know this place will, will not be here after, after tonight. He, he was one of those boys. There's no help. I've, I've been there. But look what does it, people. 
And, and if I shout, let me. Yes. Verse 3. Verse 3. All right. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You're my glory and the lifter of my head. Look at this, Elijah. Next verse. I'll bless you, brother. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. So they, they were saying, no hope. He's, he's done. The enemies were getting bigger than you could ever imagine. Nobody thought you'd make it. But he said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, not my brain. Right. Right. Uh, did you hear that? Yes. Sometimes we pray with our head. It doesn't work. Cry out. Talk it out. Get it out of you. He heard me out of his holy hill. Now look at the next thing. It says, I took a nap. <laughs> I laid me down and I slept. I didn't care about all the crowds that want to destroy me and the networks that want to knock me out and the friends that don't believe in me, including the guy working on my staff out there. I just went and took a sleep. I, I, I prayed and then I slept. Say, I'm going to pray and then take a nap. Take then you know God's going to take care of it. Okay, Nathan, is that what you're going to do? Okay. I await for the Lord what? Sustain me. You better lift your hands and thank God he'll do that for all of you. Come on, people. He'll do it if you pray. And then the next verse will make you shout. I will not be afraid now. He was afraid in verse 1. Allison, he was afraid in verse 1. Judy, he was afraid, afraid in verse 1. Now he's not afraid. He said, I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people that have set themselves against me round about. He went from, I got these enemies and it's over. But I'm going to pray and take a nap. And when he did, he woke up and said, let them show up. I'm not afraid. I will not be afraid of thousands of people that have and and when you read that that psalm it'll strengthen your soul now lift your hands and call upon the lord come on people let's go just cry out right now call upon the lord i want every one of you that needs wait wait every one of you that put your hand up earlier get up stand up i want to see you come on let's go if if you are one that feels like this is it Get down here right now. I'm going, to, I'm going to pray with you. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Just for a few minutes, I want all those. Come on, come on with me, Michael, please. You and Jesse. These are people that are desperate for a miracle. Because they are going through what we, we've been through. But God's going to bring them out. In Jesus' name. And listen, everyone stand. Let's, let's all pray for them. Let's all pray for them. Let's meet... Let's see their need met first, and then we, we, can, we can pray about you know, other things. Now, look how many people, how many of you, one more time, how many of you on the front have enemies who, who want to harm you? Put your hands up high. Okay. And you need uh, an answer from heaven to stop all that, right? Okay. We're going to pray. You're going to get on your knees in a few minutes, and we're going to come into ag agreement. You're going to agree. We're going to agree with you that your problems will be over by the end of the week. Yes. That God will... That keep, keep that psalm up there, please. Keep that psalm up there. We're going to read it all together, okay? From verse 1 to verse 6. You're going to read that psalm as your prayer, as you in it, okay? Now, I want you all, and many of you that are watching from your homes, you're going to pray... You're going to repeat the words of this psalm because I had to do that myself years ago because I felt just like David felt. So out loud, we're going to repeat the words from verse 1 to 6, okay? So one, two, three, go. Verse 2. Verse 3. Say it again. Come on. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory. One more time. 
But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory. Verse 4, please. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me. Now say after me, Lord, I'm crying. Lord, I'm calling with my voice upon you, and you will hear me out of your wonderful holy hill. Oh, dear Jesus, hear my cry, answer my prayer, meet my need, defeat the purpose of the enemies, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be your name forever, Lord. Now lift your hands and call his name, come on. Cry right now, Lord, just do it yourself, do it yourself. Call upon the Lord yourself right now. That that need will be lifted off your shoulder. That problem will be gone from your life and your mind and your heart and your being. It will be behind you, totally behind you. No more, no more fear, no more worry about it. Call upon the Lord, just cry out. Lift your hands and cry out. I mean cry out, I had to do it. Cry out. I want to hear your voice. God wants to hear your voice especially. That's it. That's it. That's it. Lord, hear their prayer in Jesus' name. Hear their cry, Lord, in Jesus' name. You've answered me many times, Lord. Do it for them tonight. You've answered Michael and Jessica many times. Do it for them tonight, Lord. Let those enemies be turned back. Let their enemies be turned back. Your word declares when we call upon you, our enemies will turn back. Let our enemies be turned back in Jesus' name. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. The Lord is hearing you. The Lord is hearing you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Give you all the praise. That miracle is coming. That miracle will come. That miracle will come. That miracle will happen in Jesus' name. Keep that sum on the uh, 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 on that screen, please. Keep that sum on the screen, please. Now, please, verse five. Let's all say it together. Come on. I laid me down and I slept. Now say, Lord, I trust you. It's in your hands. It's your problem. No, no more my problem. No longer my problem. I cast it at your feet. Your word declares, give the Lord your burden. I'm giving it to you now, Lord. It's not my burden no more. It's your burden now. And Lord, I will praise you. And I do exalt you. And I do bless your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 6. Let's go to verse 6. All right. I will not. Let's go. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me. Right. Now lift your hands and praise them. It's going to happen. Come on. Lord, we praise your name, they will not win. We bless your name, they will not win. The enemies will not win. All the devils behind them will not win. Will not win, Lord. You already have won the victory. You already have won the victory. The victory is ours now because of you, Lord. You've won the victory. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you. We praise you for the victory. We praise you for the victory. We praise you for the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now go back to your, to your seats with your hands still uplifted, praying. Come on, go back to your seats praying. Everybody, please remain standing. Michael and Jesse, please come here, darling. Come on, Jess, let's go, sweet. Pray, pray, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Get a microphone, baby. Keep, 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 keep praying. Don't, don't. Let's believe God today for the salvation of all your loved ones. I said, let's believe God for the salvation of your loved ones. 
How many of you have, have mommies and daddies, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters that still don't know the Lord? Lift your hands up high. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord. I want you all to begin praising the Lord right now that they will be saved. Praise Him. Lift your hands and praise Him. Lift your hands and exalt His name. They will be saved. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Now, Lord, we come to you tonight for the salvation of loved ones. There is nothing impossible with you. There is nothing too difficult for you. You are God Almighty. You're the creator of the heavens and the earth. You're the one who brought Israel out of Egypt. You're the one who's, who divided the Red Sea for them, Lord. You're the one who caused them to walk on dry land. You're the one who spoke to them audibly. You're the one who led them by fire and by cloud. Oh, blessed be your name, Lord. You are God Almighty. There's none beside you. There's none like you anywhere. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of heaven and earth. We give you praise. And Lord, we come today in the name of your Son, Jesus. We come in the name of Jesus. And we know we have an audience with you when we come in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, you know our loved ones, how much we love them, how much we want to see them saved and delivered. How shall we go to our Father without the lad? How shall I go to my Father without the lad? Your word declares. Oh, Lord, thank you that you've given us the promise of heaven, but we want our loved ones there too, Lord. What did Judah say to Joseph? How shall I go to my father without the lad? When he said, I want one of your brothers left behind. He said, how can I go to my father without Benjamin? How can I see my father without the lad, Benjamin? Lord God, your word declares if two or three will agree in your name, you'll do it. No, and right now, Father, we agree Come on, people, we agree. Lord, we agree. All our loved ones will be saved. All our loved ones will be born again. All our loved ones will come to repentance. All our loved ones will know the power of the blood of Jesus, your son. All our loved ones will be delivered from the powers of hell. All our loved ones will be free from the demonic. All our loved ones will be free from the chains of bondage. In Jesus' name, Lord, we come to you in faith, in agreement for every, every son, every daughter, every brother, every sister, every mom, every dad. In Jesus' name, we claim them for your glory. We declare them saved and glorified in you. We give you the praise, Jesus. Now call their names out. Speak their names out. Come on. Speak their names out to the Lord right now. Speak out the names of your loved ones to the Lord. Just say, Lord, I believe you will save and just list their names. Give the Lord their names. Even though he knows them, he wants you to say them. Even though he knows their names, you must repeat their names before the Lord. Remember what King Hezekiah, he took that letter and said, Lord, read it. Read what they're saying they're going to do to Jerusalem. And God answered that wonderful prayer of his because he said, Lord, here it is. Look at the letter, Lord. Look at the letter. Bring your, bring your loved one's names before the Lord. He will hear you. He will hear you. He will hear you. That is his promise. That is his promise. Oh, blessed be your holy name forever, Lord. Blessed be your holy name forever, Lord. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Can we bring all the ones that are in leadership here on the platform. The ones in leadership with you, honey. The staff and, that's right. Those in leadership positions. No, those like on the worship team especially. And the leadership positions just come up here. Keep praying, keep praying people. Come on, keep praying. This is, listen. Well, it's up to you. 
you tell her. Yeah, so if you're a presence group leader at Jesus School, um, come up here. And if you're a leader at the church or in the ministry, you can come up as Please, on the platform. We need to pray, and the staff here. On staff, the people on staff, please, only. Because we are, we are on the verge, we are on the verge as a ministry here for something massive and big in the sight of God. We have got to agree in prayer that God will do it for the salvation not only of loved ones, but this nation. Look, you have got to understand already that Jesus' image is the largest youth ministry today on YouTube. It's not just what's happening here. It's what's happening worldwide, worldwide. People are watching around the world by their millions, not their thousands. So the church has gotten may, way bigger because of the, of, of, of the amazing people watching. Nations, nations are watching. Nations are watching. What God wants to do will not be done without prayer. So all of you get on your knees and start praying that God will take you to the place He has planned for you to be in. All of you pray right now, come on, for your families. Because this is for the salvation of your loved ones. This is for the transformation of many, many that you know and love. Pray, call upon the Lord for that. That God Almighty will fulfill His plan and will. That the new property will happen quickly. That all oppositions will be out of the way. So construction can start. This is a critical hour for the church worldwide. For the youth worldwide. And this is the moment to say, Lord, we, we, we are calling on you, Lord. We're calling on you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done, but thank you in praise. We thank you in praise. We thank you for what you're going to do in the future. For our loved ones, for our friends, and for the nations of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name forevermore. You are God. You're the great God, mighty God, almighty and holy God. Nothing is impossible, Lord, with you. Nothing is impossible with you. For you're great and do wondrous things. You're God alone. We we'll give you praise, Lord. Put the picture of the land, please, on the screen. Put the picture of the new land on the screen. And I want you all to stretch your, your hands in just a moment and declare, done in Jesus' name. Let's put that beautiful picture on the screen. Lord God, we stretch our hands and our faith and hearts. And Lord, we see by the Spirit, we see by the Spirit, the multitudes that will come to that property and be healed and saved and rescued and delivered. Thank you for what you're doing now. Thank you for what you've done and are doing still. But we, we, we praise you in advance for what you will do in the future on the new property. The miracles, the signs and wonders that will take place. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the many that will be healed. But especially the many that will be born again. The families that will come back together. The marriages that will be healed. The minds and lives that will be restored. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord, for what you will do when that building opens up. Now, Lord, we pray all obstacles gone. All obstacles removed, all delays stopped, that the work will begin speedily and quickly without any delays. In the name of Jesus, we cry out. In the name of Jesus, we, Lord, we call on your name. We call on your name. You are Jesus. You are Jesus. You are the Son of God Almighty. You are the King of glory, the great I am, the Alpha, the Omega, beginning and the end. You are Jesus. Now, Lord, I pray it will happen quickly. The doors will open wide quickly. Hallelujah. Now, let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, out in tongues. Come on, let's go. In tongues, all of us. Maro kinti lal fei pial ba kinti mane pial be pial be kinti maro in the Holy Ghost. Come on. We bless your holy name, Lord. We bless your holy name, Lord. If some of you want to come and just get on your knees down here, that's fine. Let's go. 
If you feel you want to come down here and pray on your knees, do it, do it, do it. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. That's right, that's right. You just come and just kneel right here and pray with us. Pray for your families. Pray for your own future. Pray for God to use you. God wants to use many of you. Many of you. There is a destiny in God for you, I'll tell you. You are not here by choice or by accident. God made that choice for you. God has brought you here. It wasn't your choosing. It was God's choosing. The Lord has a plan for your life, a mighty future for you, a great destiny for you. He already has predestined where you're going to go. But only prayer will, sh will show you the way. Only prayer will help you find it. No other way but prayer. If there's a call on your life, it's fulfilled in prayer. If there's been a prophecy over your life, it's fulfilled in prayer. Daniel knew that. Daniel knew that his prayer would fulfill the prophecy of Jeremiah. Remember, prophecies are fulfilled in prayer. If you've ever had a word from the Lord and you haven't seen it happen, pray and God will fulfill the word spoken over your life. That's the only way I know. So Jeremiah writes it. David, I should say the prophet Daniel prayed it and it happened. So let's pray right now. All of you pray that God will use you. That make his, his wonderful face shine on your life and the, and, the, and the path before you straight and clear. Lord, you've called many in this building. You've called many in this room to be servants in your kingdom. Don't let them miss their destiny. Don't let them miss their destiny in you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray, not one of them will miss your plan for their life. Come on, believe God with me. Not one of them will miss your will, Lord. Let them not have a will of their own that your will will be done. Lord, cancel their will that your will be done. Remove their will and replace it with your will. Like your son said in Gethsemane, not my will but thine be done. Now, Lord, whatever will they have of their own, let it be canceled. That only your will be done in their life. Not what they want, it's what you want. Not their plan, but your plan. And Lord, I pray and I believe every plan of Satan for them will be, will be, will be destroyed. Every plan that you plan and only your plan will be established. Say, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. Establish your will in my life. Establish your plan in my life. Cancel the devil's plan. I pray now in Jesus' name, every plan of Satan for my life and future is destroyed. It is destroyed. It is destroyed. Only your plan is established. Only your will is done. Only your plan for my life will be accomplished in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Only your plan will be fulfilled in our lives. No, no, no. The devil will not have our family. No, no, no. He will not have our children. No, no, no. He will not have our grandchildren. They belong to God. They belong to you, Lord. Now, devil, we tell you in Jesus' name, we take authority over you. You cannot touch our family. You cannot touch our homes. We will not allow you to. We apply the blood over every one of them. Every one of them. Every one of them. In the name of Jesus, you cannot have our family. Nor can you cross the bloodline. You cannot cross the bloodline. You will not cross the bloodline. You are defeated. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we exalt you. Lift your hands and thank him. It's done. Come on. Lord, we exalt you. 
your plan will be fulfilled in our lives your plan will be fulfilled in our homes your plan will be fulfilled in our family in our children grandchildren all our loved ones in Jesus name hallelujah and Lord your plan will be established in our future in our tomorrow Lord in Jesus name every plan whether it's marriage whether it's job it is your will it is your will it is your plan not our plan not our will but your will your will keep praying keep praying keep praying keep praying keep praying now Lord we pray for the church the persecuted church around the world we pray for your people under persecution in China oh Lord sustain them Oh Lord, be with them. Oh Lord, strengthen them. We pray for the church in North Korea. Oh my wonderful Jesus. Oh blessed Jesus, reach out to them. Send your angels to be with them. Protect your people in North Korea. Protect your people in China. Maro canta pialba cantimeno. Lord, we pray for your people in China, in North Korea. Oh Lord, bless your people in India. Oh Lord, visit your people in India. Visit your people all over India. Let a mighty revival happen in India. Stop the mouth of the enemy. Stop the enemy, Lord, from persecuting your people in India. And in Pakistan, bless your church inside Pakistan. Bless your people inside Pakistan. Increase your people inside Pakistan. In the name of Jesus. We pray for your people inside Afghanistan. Lord, your people are under great persecution. In Afghanistan, rescue them. Rescue them. Rescue them in Jesus' name. And Lord, oh, how our hearts cry for your people inside Iran. Oh Lord, look upon them with grace. Look upon them with favor. Move mightily inside Iran. Let your mighty Holy Spirit visit Iran, the church in Iran. Let it grow mightily, Lord. Bring an end to that regime in Iran, Lord. Bring an end. Lord, bring your people out into a place of glory and freedom in the name of Jesus. We bless the people of Iran. We bless the people of Iran. Come on, people. We bless the people of Iran. We bless the church in Iran. Lord, a new Pentecost will happen in Iran. Come on, let's believe God for that. I feel the anointing for it. Lord God, bless your people inside Iran with a new Pentecostal wonderful day and experience. Let many be filled. Oh, my God. Let many be filled with the Holy Spirit in Iran. Let the fire of Pentecost fall upon the people of Iran. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, we give you glory. Visit the people in Iraq, Lord. Bless your people inside Iraq, Lord. In the Arab world, Lord. Bless your people in Iraq. Move mightily in Iraq. Move mightily in Jordan. Move mightily in Jordan. Bless King Abdullah. Bless his wife, the Queen of Jordan, Lord. Bless them greatly. Give him strength, Lord, and favor. Give King Abdullah favor. Favor him, Lord. Favor his heart. We give you praise for what you're going to do through this wonderful young man. I give you praise. Mara Kanta Palvalalfi. Come on, people of God. Thank the Lord for what he's going to do in the, in, the, in the Arab world. Lord, bless your people inside Syria and inside Lebanon. Move mightily in Lebanon. Thank you for the move of God. Thank you for the move of the Holy Spirit in Lebanon. Lord, increase that move. Increase that move. Increase your blessed, wonderful move in Lebanon. Kalbam yente kintilan metro pialba rama. Come on, people, pray for Lebanon. That nation needs God. The young people of Lebanon are crying out. There's thousands that gather recently 
a great gathering of young people in Beirut. Pray for them right now that God will bless the people of Lebanon, His people in Lebanon, God's holy people in Lebanon. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we bless you, people in Egypt. Bless your people in Egypt, in Cairo, in Alexandria, in Upper Egypt. Bless your church in Egypt. Yes, Lord, bring revival to Egypt. Bless your people in Egypt, Lord. Bless them greatly. Multiply them mightily. Cause them to know your name and your power and your glory in Egypt. And Lord, we pray today, oh God, we pray today for your people Israel. Bless your people Israel. Visit your people inside Israel, Lord. Don't forget the promises you made to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. Open their eyes, Lord, that they might see who you are. Open their eyes that they might see you as Messiah. Oh, Lord, we pray for your people, Israel, whom you've called. Thank you, Lord, for your people, Israel, who gave us the word. Oh, Lord, I pray now for wisdom to be given to Bibi Netanyahu and the government of Israel. Let them make the right decisions with Gaza in the name of Jesus and Lord I pray for the precious people inside the West Bank and inside Gaza the Palestinian people Lord bless them oh Lord reveal your love to them oh Lord reveal your heart to them oh people pray with me pray with me for the Palestinian people who need Jesus more than ever Thank you, Lord, for the visions, the dreams you've, you, 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 you have shown yourself in Gaza. Yes, Lord, keep doing it. Increase it, Lord. Increase it, Lord. Increase it in the midst of all the war and all the pain and all the trials are going through. Lord, visit them. Visit the people in Ramallah, in Bethlehem, in Hebron in Nablus, all over the West Bank. Visit your people, Lord. Bless your people. Bless your people. Lord, we pray favor and the blessings of heaven also on the Palestinian people. In the name of Jesus. You died for all, Lord. You didn't just die for Israel. You died for the world. You died for the world. You are the Savior of the world. You are the Savior of the world. We give you praise, Lord, for the great visitation coming to the Palestinian people. Oh, people, lift your voices and cry out to God. Lift up your voices and cry out to God. For the people of Israel and Palestine, pray that God will bless both. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you feel the anointing here? Dear God, let's keep praying. Let's keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. I've had meetings in Ramallah. I've had meetings in Bethlehem. I'll tell you right now, there are people who love the Lord just like you do in those cities, in those places. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Come on, Emily, come on, help me. Amy, Amy, come on, help me. Come on. Pray for the, pray for the children. Pray for the children in Gaza. Pray for the children in Israel and Gaza and the entire area, please. Come on. Jesus, go touch your children, Lord. May they see you, Jesus. May you awaken them to see you, Jesus. May you, may you awaken them to see you, Lord. Walk into those rooms today, Jesus. Walk into those rooms, Jesus. Wrap your arms around those children, Lord. Wrap your arms around them, Jesus. Let them know you. Let them know you, Lord. Would you keep them? Protect them, Jesus. Protect your children, Lord. Oh, be near to those mothers who are crying out on their behalf. Be near to those mothers and fathers who are crying out 
for the safety of their children tonight, Lord. Lord, keep them safe, Lord. Protect them, Lord. Protect them, Lord. Tangibly walk into homes right now. Tangibly walk into homes right now, Lord. Tangibly walk into homes right now, Lord, and shift, shift atmospheres. Remove fear. Remove fear, Lord. We, we break fear off of those, Lord. Let them see your eyes, Lord. Let them see you, Lord, because if they see you, Lord, <laughs> if they would just see you, Jesus. There's a blessed anointing here. We can't lose it. But I feel a burden to pray for the Palestinians. I preached to these precious people years ago. They're God's people just like anyone. Yes, I love Israel. I'm from there. I better love Israel. But there are just people out there who need to live. Who need peace. Peace, peace, peace. I have lived through three wars when we lived there. Three wars. By the time I was, by the, by the time I was 14 years old, I lived through three wars. We left Israel because of the war, the war, the war. I know what it's like to cry for peace. And today we need to focus on the love of God. Not politics, the love of God. Did Jesus die for all or just some people? He died for all. So make it your prayer daily that God will bless both with the gospel, with the gospel with the gospel now let's keep praying for the world let's just keep going around the globe lift lift your hands let's 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 go father lord i pray for your people in turkey oh lord visit them in turkey let your will be done in turkey thank you lord for your people inside that country increase them multiply them Defeat the purpose of the enemy in that nation. But bless Turkey, Lord. Bless Russia. Oh, Lord, the people of Russia. Your people in Russia. Your church in Russia. Multiply your church inside Russia and the whole Eastern Bloc nations. Oh, Lord, visit the Ukraine. The dear people of the Ukraine who have suffered such loss and pain. Oh Lord, reveal yourself to them as mighty healer. The one who restores and redeems and heals and delivers. Bless your people in the Ukraine, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we pray for every nation in Eastern Europe, Romania and Hungary. Every one of them, Lord, bless your people inside those nations. Lord, we pray for your people in Western Europe, in Germany, in France, Switzerland, Italy, France. Oh, Lord, increase your people in every nation in Western Europe, in the UK, in Scandinavia. Move mightily, move mightily in the church, in Greece. In the Isles of the Sea, Lord, in the Mediterranean, move mightily. Oh, we give you praise for what you're going to do. Yes, Lord, don't forget your people in Europe. We give you praise for the great move of God happening now in France and other countries. We give you praise. Move mightily, Lord, in Belgium, throughout that part of the world. Strengthen your church. Lord, we pray for Canada. Bless your people inside Canada. Reveal your might to the people of Canada. From sea to sea, your glory will shine in Canada. In Jesus' holy name, your dominion will be from sea to sea in Canada. From the east to the west, we give you praise, Lord. Move mightily. Move mightily in Quebec. 
in Ontario, in every province, in Canada. We'll give you praise. And Lord bless your people in this country, in this country that you love, in the U.S. that you love, Lord. Whoever is your choice, whatever happens this year in the election, let it be your will. Only your will. Only your will. You're choosing, Lord. Let who you choose be the president. Let the man you choose be the president in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, let that person, whoever you choose in Jesus' name, heal this country, Lord. Heal America. Oh, how America needs your power. Heal this nation. Heal the division in it, Lord. Bless our government. Bless Congress and the Senate. Give them your wisdom, Lord. Lord, let every plan of Satan be destroyed for this country. People agree with me. Come on. Let every plan of Satan be destroyed for this country. Let your plan be established for this country. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Bless your people in Central America. In every nation in Central America and South America. Bring a mighty move of the Spirit in Mexico, in Panama. A mighty move of God, Lord, in Colombia, in Bolivia, Ecuador, all over Central South America, Lord. Bless your people in Brazil, in Argentina, in Chile. Bless your people in South America, gloriously, mightily, in Jesus' name. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Years ago, the Lord showed me a revival would come to Argentina. It's happening now. Let's believe it's going to increase in Argentina and Brazil and those nations all over South and Central America. Lord, we pray for your people. Pray for your people in the Isles of the Sea, in Hawaii, in Fiji, in Samoa, throughout the Isles of the Sea, Lord. Oh, move mightily upon your people, Lord. In Japan, Lord. Visit Japan again, I pray. Visit Japan again, I pray. Visit Japan again, we pray. In Southeast Asia, Lord, visit your people in the Philippines, in Thailand. In Vietnam, visit your people throughout that part of the world. We give you praise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we stand, please? Can we, can we stand, please? Michael, Jesse, please come with me. There's a one great anointing that's just hit earlier when we began to pray for the nations. The Lord, can we just thank Him? Lord, we thank You for answered prayer. For answered prayer. With the praise. Jess, come here, baby. Well, there's a blessed atmosphere now. I think whatever we ask now will happen quick. And the one thing we need to pray for today, I'll just wait till Michael comes back, okay? Just lift your hands and thank him for his love, for his mercy and his love on your life. Where would you be today if it wasn't for the Lord? Holy Spirit, we welcome you, Lord. Maro al fapi al bakanti remole, miene miene kinti palba muna. Judy, come take the mic, please, dear. Michael, come on with us, please. It's a blessed atmosphere here. I believe 
and not just because of my family, but I believe the Lord's going to take in places I've not been to. And I don't mean naturally, I mean in the spirit. I've been to almost every, every country on the globe, almost. Michael has been with me to how many nations? Just over 60 nations that he's been with me over 60 nations. And uh, I look back at my life and I'm beyond overwhelmed by what God has done. But everything in me knows, I mean, I know it like I know my name, that God will take you deeper and greater days for you. Because that's just the way God, God works. He, he doesn't repeat himself. He just does new things no one, no, no, no one has expected to see. So the nations that are being touched through Jesus' image on YouTube and social media, you have a bigger audience on social media than you have here or in any convention or meetings you've had and will have. Nations are watching. You're responsible. You too are responsible to keep the purity of the gospel, to keep the purity of scripture. And I know you'll do it because I know you. I know you. And to keep Jesus central as you have, the cross, that's what's important. Don't, don't change. You, you may be that, that promise, you've maybe that promise privately, now we're saying it publicly. Never change. It's Jesus and only Jesus. It's not Michael, it's not Jessica, it's not Ben Hinn. It's Jesus. And, and as long as he's the focus, all is well. And the doors that will open are going to be beyond what we're accustomed to. I believe the day will come, God will open Iran. No doubt in my mind, the day will come, Iran will be an open door. The day will come, will come, <clears throat> when God will open nations that have not opened yet. It's going to happen. That's not, I can't share everything with you because it's not right. But I've met with leaders inside the Arab world, and privately, who told me about their hunger for the Lord. I was stunned, stunned. I was in Washington, D.C. I can tell you that I was in Washington, D.C. at the home of a very powerful ambassador from that part of the world who invited the ambassadors from the Arab world. I sat with them. I had meals with them. And I can mention this because now it's open. The Bahrainian ambassador looked at me and said, we want you to come for a crusade in our country. I said, but I said, your country is closed. He said, not for long. There was a Muslim ambassador. I've not been there. Most likely I won't go because that's not God's will for my life at this point. But you may. I think you will. The only crusade I ever had in the Arab world was in Dubai. 27,000 people showed up in Dubai. I was stunned. They, they gave me positive coverage in the newspapers of Dubai. That's not a Christian country. Indonesia, Muslim country. I preached a million people in Jakarta. I walked in the house of the president and I said, Mr. President, a Muslim man. I said, Mr. President, I have not come to your country to preach politics. I've come to your country to preach Jesus. The man stood up. We were sitting in a big round circle in his home. The man got up 
with his arms open, he said, I welcome you to my country. That was Indonesia, the largest Muslim nation in the world. He gave me his own security to protect me. I'm going to tell you, more will happen with you. I'm not saying it because you're my kids. Yeah, you can give the Lord a mighty hand for that, of course. I, I mean, I've been there, I've done it. I think I've paid my dues too. But I never thought I'd see this in the same building I was in for 20 years. I never thought in, my, in a million years I'd see by the day my kids would be on the same platform that I was preaching on every Sunday and every Wednesday. And here we are. Greater, lift your hands, say greater. In the name of Jesus, for the sake of the kingdom of God and the glory of the name of Jesus, the glory of the name of Jesus, the glory of the name of Jesus, a higher place, a higher place, a higher place in Jesus' name. That's what God will do. I want to just say one more thing, then you're going to pray for me and I'm going to leave. <sighs> Don't worry about your children, Benny and Theo and Sophia. It's all planned. They will serve the Lord. Benny, come up here, baby. Come here. Theo. Sophia is somewhere in the back, okay? But, you know, when, when I feel the anointing like this, I got to say it. Otherwise, I'm going to blow up. And I don't want to blow up. We don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that either. In a good way, I mean, you know, you just can't keep it in. So, Benny, listen, I'm going to say it publicly, honey. You amaze us. You amaze us by your depth, biblical depth. We sat at dinner a few nights ago and he blew us all away, blew us away with his questions uh, on the Bible. The depth in him is like, oh, dear Lord, are we, is this for real? Like, uh, you will be a, a defender of the faith. God has raised you to contend for the true faith. Because we need it. And there'll be others like you. You're not the only one. There'll be others God is calling around the world that are going to be strong in the scriptures. And I'm very, very, very proud of you. More than you'll ever know. Your daddy, your mom, were very proud of you. So, what God is doing with you in those quiet hours when you, you're alone with God every day in the scriptures and reading the early fathers and like you're not even 16 yet, reading the depth of what the early fathers taught uh, you, there are not many 15-year-olds that are even interested in, in what they said, what they wrote. I mean, he sits there reading, you know, people like, you know, Athanasius and uh, the early fathers, like, all, all of them. He just knows what they said, what they wrote. He's only 15. He's reading Josephus. I, didn't wanna, I did not want to read Josephus when I was 15. That's too much information from my head at that time, but he's 15 reading all the depth of these scholars that lived and died. But your hunger for the, for the word is amazing me because I haven't seen a young man with such depth and hunger to sit at the table a few days ago, sitting, eating together, and you started with the questions with your dad and then me and I was 
enjoying that spaghetti too much to talk back. <laughs> but it was, I was like stunned. Would you stretch your hands towards him? Now, Lord, we, we, we ask and we agree that through this young man, thousands will come into the kingdom. And millions will be established in the faith. This is your will, Lord. Use him to establish millions in the faith, young and old alike. Now, Lord, protect him. Protect him from what is not gospel truth. What is not truth and scripture, protect him. Keep his mind focused on you, Lord. Amen. Keep his heart focused on you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lord, on that day when we're all in glory, we're going to all look and give you the praise forever. All right, Michael. You take the mic. You're going to pray for me now. Yeah. You pray for your daddy. Huh? I will. Yeah. You guys want to stretch? Yeah, you can get around him. What, 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 what I want you to pray for before you pray, <laughs> what I want you to pray for is that the nation of Kenya will be used to change Africa. Because everyone is now talking about Kenya. I'm getting invitations now from all over Africa because they all heard about Kenya and I don't know that I'm going to go to every country in Africa. I don't think I'll have the time and the strength physically to do it all. But it's triggering something. It's something is happening that is only God's doing. So who's going to pray? Well, you all come. Come on. Come closer. You guys wanted to stretch your hands. <laughs> Lord, we just thank you for this gift, Lord, that you've given us. And Dad, Lord, we ask that you'll keep him safe, Lord. Yes. Protect him, Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, that many great years are ahead for him, Lord. And Lord, I thank you, Father, for this door that you've opened, Lord, in Africa to him, Lord. I thank you, God, that many nations will come to you, Lord, through his yielded life, God, through his yes, Lord, that the greater days are ahead, Lord, the best is yet to come, Lord, that he has not seen anything yet, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you're going to reward him for his faithfulness, Lord. He's been serving you for longer than many of us have even been alive, Lord, so I thank you, God that you have ordained his steps, Lord, that you are pleased, Lord, with his yes and his faithful heart, Lord. And Lord, shake Kenya, God. Shake it for Jesus, Lord. Lord, even now, prepare the hearts, God, of every leader, God, every person that will be attending, Lord. I thank you, God, they will see the greatest souls, the greatest harvest of souls they've ever seen, Lord. Oh, Lord, heal the sick, God, those that are completely Oh, just about to the point of giving up, God, close to death, Lord. I thank you, God, that we will hear reports, God, of creative, supernatural, undeniable miracles, God, and that this whole nation will turn its heart back to Jesus, God. I thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus that goes with Dad, Lord, with his teams, Lord. Cover them, Lord. I thank you, God, just for joy, Lord, for him, Lord, for everyone that attends, God that you'll overwhelm them, God, with your nearness, Lord. I thank you, God, that it will be a rippling effect, like Dad said, Lord, that it will start there, God, but it will touch the entire nation, Lord. I thank you, God, and it will touch Africa, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that America, Lord, will reap a harvest, God, for everything that was sown. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness, Lord. We're overwhelmed with what you've done, Jesus, just even through our family alone, God. We're so thankful. 
We're so thankful for what you've allowed us to witness, Lord. It's our joy. Thank you for trusting us, Lord. We want to just be faithful to you, Lord. Faithful to the end, God. We don't want to ever disappoint you, Jesus. May our love for you only intensify, God. In Jesus' name, <laughs> yeah. I'm so grateful to have my children, all of them, and Joshua, who's here tonight. The Lord has a great plan for you, baby. Big plan. He's about to get his master's in musical engineering and musical business, all that lovely stuff out there. But God has his hand on you, Josh. That has been ordained from the time you were born. Thank God for what God is doing here. Please, Michael, thank you. I just want to say and pray one more thing over Pastor Benny. I was thinking today, knowing that we were going to pray for him, I began to think about those early crusades when he would go out from OCC with a praying people behind him and the glory of God that would manifest. I began to think about tonight. So, Father, we pray the precious blood of Jesus. Can we all just apply the blood by faith? We plead the precious blood of Jesus upon Pastor Benny, upon the team, upon their minds, their bodies, their spirits, upon that nation. And let your tangible glory come like a glorious rain that falls upon that field and touches the hearts, Lord, of your people. Do it, we ask this, in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can we pr seal that with praise tonight? Now, what I... Yeah. What I'd like to do, just very quickly, I'd like everyone who came forward right now, could you just move that way, just to each side? If you're on this side, move that way. I want us to make room. I felt the Holy Spirit say, open the altars for repentance. Can you just close your eyes for a moment? Just everyone. I know it's late, but it's not late to God. This is wonderful. You can leave free tonight. You can leave free. You can step out of the weight of sin. We prayed this morning, Lord, give us the fear of the Lord. And so tonight we stand in the holy presence of God. And if you are struggling with sin, if it has its grip on you, there's a way out of that shame. You can just come to Jesus tonight. I'd like our prayer team to come forward. And if you're on the platform, you're part of the prayer team, just come down and come down to, this, to the altar. Friend, I wish that I could give you what's on my heart right now, but only the Holy Spirit can. The day will come where you'll stand before the holy God of heaven. And in that moment, you'll care about one thing, the readiness of your soul. Attending church, watching ministries, that's not the fruit the only fruit of salvation. It's not the primary fruit. It's the life of Christ in us manifested through victory over the powers of darkness. So tonight, if you're, bound, if you're bound with sin, just get out of your seat right now. Just tell that person to get out of the way. You just come right down and our, 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 our team will pray for you. If it's porn, if it's addiction, if it's perversion, take a step, come on out. If it's, if it's hatred, if it's jealousy, if it's anger, if it's an addiction of any kind, come, come to Jesus tonight. Come, and you just come straight to one of these people who are here and ready to pray for you. 
Look at this. Isn't this wonderful? You come. Come out of your seats tonight. Look at this. Young and old. Young and old. There are many here that are stuck in sexual sin. Come out. Come out of that darkness now. Come out of that darkness. Yep. You, you up there, young man. Come down these stairs. I want you to just do, get, pray for 30 more seconds. For 30 more seconds. It's impossible to be in this type of atmosphere. Find them someone to pray. Kathleen, can you help this young lady here? Find someone. Uh, I want to, Janae, can you get down there and help? Ka Janae and Kaylee, partner up. You come out of that sin tonight. Come. Come. Come to Jesus who loves you and longs for you. Give you all the praise. Can we lift our hands to heaven? Pray this out loud. And, and, and prayer team, I don't want you leading them through random prayers. Lead them to Jesus and give them the gospel clearly and, and in a powerful way. Okay, team, that's what you're doing right now. You're doing the work of an evangelist right now. You're not counseling them. Yes, young man, let him forward there, David. Bring him all the way up close. Colleen, I want you to pray with him, please. David, would you pray with him as well? Pray this out loud. Lord Jesus, you are the King of glory. You are the Lamb of God who shed his precious blood. And so tonight, I come asking you to forgive me, to wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. I declare tonight that Jesus Christ is the King of all glory, he is God Almighty, who suffered and died for my sin and the sins of the world. And I declare and I believe that he was buried and raised from the dead. And today he sits at the right hand of the Father. And one day, precious Lord, Oh, close your eyes and say that. One day, precious Lord, you will return in great glory, in the glory of the angels, in your own glory. You'll return on the clouds of heaven, and you will rule and reign, and you will judge the living and the dead. Find me ready, Lord Jesus. And tonight... I declare, I do not belong to the world. I belong to the Holy Son of God. I renounce the devil and give my full allegiance to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Can we give the Lord all the praise? Come on. Give the Lord all the praise. I, 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 I feel to say this. I feel to say this, if you are hungry for God, we want to invite you to come. If you want to pray and seek the Lord, fly to Orlando, join us. I feel the, uh, the grace of God to pray, the spirit of prayer birthing within us. Come and get into the presence of God, and we will see a mighty move of the Spirit from coast to coast. Amen. God bless you. Can we give the Lord praise one more time? I'll see the youth on Wednesday night. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. We believe that the nations will descend on this land. That the sick will be healed here. That the lost will be saved here. That the presence of the glory of God will rest here. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down that the mountains might shake at your presence, that the gospel will go forth from here, shaking the earth for the glory of God, that the presence of Jesus Christ would dwell among us. Here we will enter into the peace of your presence. Here we will remain. Jesus said, remain in me and I in you. Here we will remain. This is holy ground. Where only one thing is needed. Jesus. 
May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped here. May his word be taught in clarity and love here. As we tell the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works he has done. May the generations come to find him here. To find Jesus here. Here. Together we will build the house of God. And a home for his people.